Hey there, how y'all doing? This is Weapons Tech Matt coming to you from deep in the heart of Texas. And uh, tonight, I've got one of my favorite <clears throat> pistols that I've acquired all in the last couple of months. And this is a Manheran P1. Now, I guess you could say um, Walther P38, Walther P1, French made Manheran under German auspices. Interesting story <clears throat> behind this, and uh, I'll tell you what I know about this guy. Um, of course, this is a copy of the Walther P1, earlier P38, and uh, <clears throat> Uh, everything is pretty much the same for the most part, but uh, we'll verify that she's clear. Nothing in there. Nothing there. <clears throat> it's got a decocker. I'll tell you this: this thing is a joy to shoot. It is a fun gun. And with some history thrown in there as well. This dates to about 1967. And I'll get into the story behind that. Now I did add some <clears throat> uh, different grips than what it came with. Those were kind of screwed up a bit. I kind of screwed them up. But uh, anyway, I think it looks pretty good with these brown grips right here. But this is a 9mm double action, single action pistol. Of course, it has a really nice double action draw, but it's about 12 to 13 pounds. But then, <clears throat> after that, it's a beautiful about 4 pounds. Hammer fired pistol that dates back <clears throat> prior to World War II. And of course, Walther is the one that basically came up with this design. And uh, anyway, 9mm hammer fired double action semi automatic pistol. Just a fun gun to shoot, sweet shooter, extremely accurate, and uh, I'll be kind of going into this guy and relating some of the history I've learned about it and about the man here in uh, line itself and the history between, you know, man here and Walther. And uh, yeah, this was a whole new learning experience for me. I knew about the P-38. Of course, everybody does it. You know, follows World War II, that sort of thing, or Walter. But, yeah. Anyway, I think you'll enjoy learning a little bit about this guy. I'm by no means any kind of expert on man here in or P-1s or Walter P-38s or anything like that. I'm kind of learning as I go. But I'm going to kind of share with you what I learned, show you the beauty, the simplistic beauty of this pistol. And, uh, you know, I've taken it out many different times and shot. We'll go to that end. All right, we're going to do some nuts and bolts on this Manheran P1 or Manheran slash Walther P1. And like I indicated, it... Uh, it comes from the mid 1960s so I'll kind of give you some background while we look at this thing um, anyway come to the end of World War II some of the Walther factories that hadn't been destroyed during the conflict were shut down and their equipment removed and shipped off and sometimes the entire factory placed under the control and management of the occupying powers as was the case with the uh, Walther factory where the P-38 was produced. And the factory was passed 
into the control of the French and under new management the facility started operating under the name of Manhuren but used the Walther equipment and upheld its quality standards so you know this is <coughs> pretty much like the P-38, the Walther P-1 um, and so the P-38 became the P-30 or P-1 made by Manhuren with some minor post-war design changes uh, which this author believes uh, were the work of Walther engineers. The biggest of these was the shift over to an aluminum frame. And so it's much lighter, this P1 is, than the original P38 because that's an all steel pistol. And uh, so. <clears throat> Let's look at the P1 operated the same as the P38. It is a true double and single action gun. It could be carried with the chamber loaded and the hammer down using the decocker lever. So that with the safety off, a long pull of the trigger would cock and fire the gun. And the double action trigger pull is not that bad. It's pretty nice. In fact, it was brought to my attention that uh, well, at the end of the war, Smith & Wesson sent some of their engineers over, and uh, if you look at the Model 59, their trigger group, trigger assembly, is pretty much exactly what the Walther P1 was, so they just copied it. At least that's the information I got. Um, now, of course, this does have a manual safety, but it is a decocker. You flip this thing down, and uh, of course, if the gun's cocked. Now, I've already cleared it. It's nothing there. And you flip it to safe. Yeah, it decocks it, and it's unsafe, and it's just inoperable. So you're going to take it back off safe, and now you can use uh, the double action, which isn't bad. Okay. Let's see. Of course, the magazine release is at the bottom of the mag well. There was a loaded chamber indicator, and the slide would lock back at the last round. So, your loaded chamber indicator is right there. This little nub that pops out right above the hammer there. I'm trying to do this with one hand. Uh, the sights on the P1 hadn't changed, a front blade and a rear notch, and basically that's what you got, although you can drift, both are driftable, uh, and this gun is right on, I mean, I didn't have to do anything with it, it's a very accurate pistol. Uh, and of course, I, I mean, you're going to be getting 4 inch groups at 25 yards, uh, possibly even smaller. The grips on the gun were the same bake-like top type, hard black plastic with ridges, which allow for a secure hold. Of course, I screwed mine up, so I got these uh, brown bake-like, or at least wannabe bake-like. And it, I mean, it looks pretty good. Okay, this particular gun dates to the mid-1960s and it's kind of interesting to look through the different cartouches and uh, arsenal marks on the gun and it comes from German uh, West Berlin police. In the end, just as the P-38, um, some people didn't like the decocker, but uh, this particular author didn't like decockers. I'm like, well, whatever. Uh, a lot of guns nowadays and have these things. But, uh, given that the P1 is essentially a P38 with an aluminum frame, much of the information out about <clears throat> the gun is still applicable. And chances are you can find some of these uh, men here in P1s now. 
there are some design differences than the original P38 and from what I understand you're not going to be able to interchange some of the P38 with this particular post-war version here. Uh, I'll give you some stats here. Breakdown of weight, length, things of that nature. Okay, overall length of this guy is just about eight and a half inches. Overall height, we're looking at five and a half inches. Uh, width, it's a little over an inch. Um, the weight, of course this is empty weight. It is uh, 28 ounces. So that's not bad. Uh, it, it feels fairly light for a substantial gun. It has a good ergonomic feel to it. And it's just a lovely piece of history. Uh, trigger pull and double action is just about 11 pounds. And in single action, it is a beautiful three and a half to four pounds. I'm sorry, my, my gauge is <clears throat> dead, so I need to get a new one. But just love that single action trigger pull. Um, slide release is right here on the side. Takedown lever is there. Uh, it's just, uh, yeah, pretty basic. Walter P1 Man here. Ever get a chance to get one? Definitely uh, look at doing that. That's kind of your breakdown of the statistics of this guy. Let's see what else. Uh, uh, you do have some striations on the back right here. Uh, the, the grip is really good. Uh, the hammer has striations on the top. Uh, you do have a lanyard. And... Uh, yeah, that's pretty much the breakdown of this uh, particular pistol. Okay, let's give this man here on P1, Walther, a run. <clears throat> Yeah, not bad for my first shots with this thing. Let's load it up and do it again. <laughs> it comes from about 1966, according to the serial number. I'll tell you the story when I do the review. <clears throat> These are the first shots that I <clears throat> am having with this. <clears throat> it was real good. Of course, I'm giving you a little different view this time. See how this angle does. Let's run another eight through it. Okay, we
we have um, and here in P1 are basically a Walther P38. Let's see how she goes. Alright, started a little low, got adjusted, and this baby's right on from about 10 feet, see, 7 yards. Not bad. Okay, so I'm going to put a wrap on this uh, man here in P1. Um, I've been really impressed. Uh, shoots like a dream. It's a soft shooter, it's very accurate, the feel is just really good in the hand. Uh, points nice, double action trigger is good, single action trigger is excellent. Um, a sturdy pistol. If you ever run into one of these, I definitely try to pick it up because these things are drying up and just getting more expensive. And the history behind them is amazing. Um, for to understand that uh, they wanted to make sure that the West German police, in particular West Berlin police, operated almost as a paramilitary group because of the fact um, Germany wasn't at that point in time supposed to have much of a military. And so the police would kind of step into that case. And of course there was always the danger of a Soviet invasion and of course you always have the KGB and the Stasi and all those guys running around so you need to have your police departments well on and uh, it's a damn good pistol um, lighter to carry compared to the old P-38 and uh, I think I was lucky in getting this one I don't think it really ever left the armory I don't see any holster wear at all on it, but it does have the markings of uh, the Bundeswehr and the uh, West Berlin police. So, Cold War relic, I guess you could say. It's still a pretty damn good shooter. So, if I had to take it to war, this thing would shoot really nicely. Now, I'm not going to be putting any plus P stuff through it. Although, 9mm NATO had some pretty good potent rounds, but uh, and I don't believe this one's uh, reinforced. I don't make no, no particular history on that. But uh, anyway, big thumbs up about the Mandarin slash Walther P1. Fun gun, boy, I tell you. As always, this is Weapons Tech. Matt coming to you from deep in the heart of Texas. God bless Texas. God bless the United States. And long live the Republic.